Welcome back. We're now taking a look at today's beauty shot. Our Sky I2 drone captured a bird's eye view of the Ohio River. It looks beautiful. Let us know where you'd like to go on our Talk Pittsburgh Facebook page. So now it's time to share our book of the month for July, and it's called A New War on Cancer, The Unlikely Heroes Revolutionizing Prevention. I am joined by the book's author, Christina Marusic, and the founder of Litzburg, Rachel Ekstrom Courage. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I'm excited to dig into this book. Um, so first question is, why, what prompted you to write this? My sister was diagnosed with thyroid cancer when she was 25 years old, which is very young for a cancer diagnosis. And thyroid cancer tends to run in families, but no one else in our family has ever had thyroid cancer. And thyroid cancer also has pretty strong links to uh, being exposed to harmful chemicals, cancer-causing chemicals in the environment. So my family was really left wondering whether something my mom was exposed to during pregnancy or something my sister was exposed to when she was a kid might have contributed to her diagnosis. And I'm also an investigative reporter. And a few years ago, I wrote a story about how Pittsburgh and Western Pennsylvania have uh, higher than state and national average rates for a handful of cancers, including thyroid cancer, that have strong ties to exposure to cancer-causing chemicals, uh, particularly in air pollution in this region, which we know is a serious problem, especially recently with the Canadian wildfires. Um, and while I was working on that series, I talked to a really brilliant epidemiologist and pediatrician named Dr. Phil Landrigan, who later ended up writing the foreword to my book. Um, and he told me some things that were really shocking yeah. and uh, like a real light bulb moment for me. So he pointed out that childhood cancers in particular and young adult cancers have been steadily increasing since we started tracking cancer wow. rates in the 1970s. And that's true in Pittsburgh, it's true nationally, and it's true at the global level yeah. too. And he said, um, the increase is too fast to be due to genetic changes. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a matter of diagnosing more than of something that's always been there because our basic diagnostic tools for most childhood cancers are the same now yeah. as always, they've always been. So he said, this is a real rapid increase in childhood cancer rates. And the only other option is something in our environment. So I wrote the book because I really wanted to dig into yeah. why that's happening and what we can do about it. And then also uh, because of my personal connection to this issue. Oh, how's your sister doing today? My sister's doing great. Um, she's been cancer free for more than 10 years. Oh, she still lives in the Pittsburgh area and she has two super cute kids oh. who I love being uh, an aunt to. <laughs> and a dog. And a cute dog. So Rachel, and why I'll... did you pick this book? Well, so Christina is a journalist and a writer I've admired for a long time. And in the great tradition of writers like Rachel Carson, who's from this area, she is writing about something really important, um, something that affects a lot of people in our region. I mean, so many families are touched by cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and this really focuses on prevention. It's well-researched. It's beautifully written. Um, and I think everyone should read it, to be honest. And then you were talking about um, the people that you spoke to, and I know you spoke to a, a lot of people, including an environmentalist from Claritin. So we have a little bit about what she had to say. So activism work is vital because you need to inform and educate the people about what they've been living with all of their lives. My activism is fueled and ignited to encourage others to use their voice and to also re remember the stories, because I think that we've had the meals here for so long and we're so disconnected from nature that we're no longer nurturing ourselves and we don't know the value because we think this is the way we're supposed to live. Hmm. What are some key things that you've learned from other people? One of the big things I learned from uh, writing the book was that this problem is too big for us to just shop our way out of as individual consumers. So uh, a lot of the researchers I spoke with set, told me, you know, kind of what they do in their own lives to avoid these chemicals and try to protect their kids from these harmful chemicals. But they all were sh like made a point of saying that even if you have a PhD in organic chemistry and you read every label, these chemicals are just impossible to avoid. So what we really need is policies and regulations that will protect everyone from these chemicals. And I, I hope my book provides a roadmap to advocating for those. 
Yeah, and then where can we find your book? My book is available um, online and in bookstores, just about anywhere you can buy books. I just finished my book on vacation, but I think I'm going to give this one a read. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.